How to make a vintage Bassett Loke steam plant work again, part two. The hand pump and the old boiler with the unusual spirit burner. Starting with the hand pump. This looks very much like an old Stuart hand pump, but it's much smaller. This hand pump was originally bolted to the base using some very long 4BA bolts. Temporarily to hold it together, I'm using a couple of countersunk 4BA bolts, but when I mount it on my baseboard, I will do it in a different way. Before I think about mounting this on a new baseboard, I need to know if it works, and it works perfectly. Immersed in a tin of water, it's pumping very well, and when I put my finger over the end, it's impossible to stop the flow. So I can pass that fit for service. It's time now to look at the boiler. There are a few problems with this boiler, so I'll waste no time and start to address the problems. The chimney is just a piece of brass tubing, a very thick gauge of tubing too, and that sits in the hole in the top of the casing. And all this time, the little steam engine is still running at the back of the bench. It's running on compressed air, and for all the people who thought they would write in and say, did I know I could get inline oilers for my compressor? And the answer to that is, yes, I do know about inline oilers, and I have one on the compressor that is currently feeding oil into the airline so that the engine doesn't seize up. I'm quite pleased to see that these bolts are coming out of the boiler casing quite easily. Mind you, I haven't got to the last one yet, but I'm surprised that they're coming out so easily after being in there for so many years. Occasionally, I do get some good comments on the channel, and the other day I got a really good one, which I'm going to read out now. The viewer wrote, Hi Keith, the engine was last steamed nearly 40 years ago, and it did run and steam lovely. The paint was put on by my own hands, but I was only 12. The engine was given to my father from his friend from Mablethorpe, who had a big amusement arcade. He also had a building attached to the arcade that was full of model engines and locomotives. At first I thought maybe this was just another odd viewer, because believe me, I get some really odd comments. Then he went on to describe certain aspects of the plant that he couldn't have seen on screen very accurately. And the viewer continues, The man that made the plant was called Bill Kamak. He owned Jackson's Amusements. He died when I was seven. I am 52 this year, so there is now a bit of history for you. And I would sincerely like to thank this viewer for writing in with this information. It's always interesting to me where these parts originated from. So now, as you can see, I've removed the chimney end mounting plate. And inside I see something that could be asbestos. Well, it smells like asbestos and it tastes like asbestos, so I guess it is asbestos. I've disposed of that in the correct manner. The cast iron chimney support end came off very easily. The other end didn't. All the bolts came out apart from one. And this bottom bolt didn't need to come out initially because it was holding the broken piece in place. And I could have just gone with that and left it and put it back together but I do like to do jobs properly, so I think I'll repair this. By the way, I didn't break it. If you look at it closely, you will see that the ends of it were already very rusty. You may also notice that this small broken part is very black. That's because I had to heat it to quite a high temperature to get the bolt out. It was really well stuck into the cast iron. Around the middle of the boiler was a jubilee clip, and I sat and thought about this, and yes, it's obvious what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a boiler band. It's quite a lot of trouble to go to just to put a boiler band around the boiler, but it's been there for a long time, so I suppose it's been quite successful. Removing it was difficult. The small bolt at the bottom was really rusty, so I had to apply some of my special lubricating oil. Then it came off quite easily, eventually. So what are we going to do about this? This is a massive dint in the top of the boiler where something heavy has been dropped on it, or maybe the steam plant fell on the floor at some time. However the impact was applied, it did plenty of damage. It even bent the hand wheel. This is an easy fix. I can put it in the lathe and use a hammer to straighten it, but not just any hammer, a hammer like this one. This is a Teng Tools soft-faced hammer. I managed to straighten the tap, and it's perfect, as you can see here. So the tap can be screwed back into the top of the boiler, but what about this dint in the top? I really can't live with this. I find the depression depressing. It was at this stage that I seriously considered scrapping the project because I couldn't have put it back together with a concave dint in the top of the boiler, which would be the first thing everyone would see, including me, when I looked at the plant. So should I scrap it and make a new boiler? I'll just check. Is the boiler made from copper? Yes, it is. Had it have been brass, I would have scrapped the project. Briefly, I thought maybe I should make another boiler. 
Quite a simple job by the look of it. But as I've said before, I'm not really into steam toys and it's a lot of effort to go to to make such a small thing. One viewer asked me why I called them steam toys. Well, the small ones are toys designed to be bought for children, whereas the larger steam engine models are not really suitable for children. The boilers work at a higher pressure and therefore a higher temperature and the engines are more than capable of taking your fingers off. And it's no fun sat in A&E with your child with both hands bandaged, one with third degree burns and the other with missing fingers. Some of them are toys for big boys, but some of them are more suitable for small boys and of course girls. I'm just removing what's left of the pressure gauge siphon. This was held in position on the boiler using a couple of steel self-tapping screws, less than one when playing with model steam engines or steam toys. Never use steel bolts or screws for attaching steam fittings to the boiler because these will corrode away and indeed one came out okay, the other one sheared off. So I need to drill out the sheared bolt and re-tap both of the holes. It's time now I think to turn off the compressed air supply to the small engine, I think it's been running for long enough. So, how am I going to fix this dint in the top of the boiler? Here's how I did it. As you can see, the dint is now gone. The boiler bush in the top of the boiler is threaded quarter BSF. So I fitted a quarter BSF bolt to this, then I securely clamped the bolt in the vise, and carefully, and I do mean carefully, using two pieces of hardwood, I gently levered the boiler away from the boiler bush. I do have to say I did this really, really gently. I didn't put a lot of pressure on. I didn't want to create any more dents in the top of the boiler. And after doing this gentle levering for a while, not for long, but just for a short while, there was a sudden noise as the dent popped out. I didn't video this process because I really wasn't sure it was going to work anyway. But to my surprise, it worked quite well and the dent came out. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. Here you see the repaired pressure gauge siphon. I heated the part, removed the old piece of pipe, I put a new piece of pipe in and re-silver soldered it. So now I have a proper union, which will allow me to fit a pressure gauge. The flange part of the fitting was held to the boiler with two brass 6BA bolts. After a bit more cleaning up, and of course a hydraulic pressure test, I think this boiler will be fine for the job. One of the most interesting things that I've seen for a long time is the spirit burner that came with the plant. Quite an unusual design with two small wicks that heat the top part, so it's like a vaporising spirit burner. I'm filling the tank with some stuff called methylated spirit, and I've put the spelling on screen so you can type it into Google if you don't know what it is. Normally you just light the burner on a spirit burner, but not so with this one. At each side of the burner heads are two small tubes, and these have a wick in each of the tubes, and you light the wick. The wick then heats the burner head, and this vaporises the methylated spirit, and you get a really good flame. I'm quite amazed at this. I can sit and watch it for hours. I'm going to put quite a lot of methylated spirit through this burner because I have a sneaking feeling that in the past it's maybe been contaminated with either paraffin or the type of lighter petrol you would put in a Zippo cigarette lighter. The flame shouldn't be yellow and sooty like this, it should be blue and quite hot. So I'm hoping that after a while, maybe a full bottle of methylated spirits through it should make it so that it is not contaminated and I get a much cleaner flame. And this seems to be working, because after a while, the flame starts to look better. That's it for this one. I'll just leave you looking at this fascinating flame. What a really good gadget this is. Why didn't I think of that? And I've never seen one before. Maybe I just haven't lived. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.